I thought I'd show you this guy. I was digging the hump away, creating the wildflower meadow, and he was about a foot down underneath some flints. Now, I believe this is kind of the Geophilus genus of UK centipede, uh, centipedes, yeah, centipedes being determined by the fact that they only have a single pair of legs on each segment, whereas millipedes have two. But I thought I'd show you him because he's the longest one I've ever seen. In the UK, we don't get long centipedes or millipedes. They're generally kind of five or six centimetres max. You know, this, this actual species or genus is supposed to only grow to 40, oh, there he is, to 40 millimetres. But this guy is uh, really long and he's just about to go. So I thought I'd show you him quickly because he really is an amazing example. But uh, he was lucky not to uh, get killed actually. So I'm being really careful. So if I take you up the top now, I'll show you. If you are thinking of digging around a, a wildlife pond or excavating it in any way or changing it, be really careful of the edges because around about this position here, I found two smooth newts. Now I wouldn't have even seen them because they get very dry when they're not in a pond. And they, they get dusty and the, the earth sticks to them. So it adds to their camouflage. And they were about a foot, uh, six inches down uh, around the flint again. And it was only because of the underside of the smooth newt is orangey speckly that I saw them, but I'm being really extra careful now. So if you are digging around a pond, just be aware of those guys, because they uh, they will go unnoticed and can easily get killed. They are quite hardy um, and they will play dead. So if you, do, if you do uncover them, please don't throw them away thinking you've killed them because they're almost certainly playing dead if there's no obvious signs of injury. This is coming along now. I might as well give you a, a quick catch up. The stump's coming out today. I'll do a video and attach it to the end of this and the hump is slowly going and it's getting built up here and this is going to form that that soily chalky clay soil which is going to be awesome for wildflowers very infertile I'm mixing in the topsoil as well with it but it is really really uh, I guess the chalk makes it a very alkali soil and um, I'm not sure if clay is alkali or acid, but it's, a, it's, it's probably a, a, a good mix, but not a very fertile one. So this is going to form the, the meadow and I'm having to grade it down into the existing garden. And what was three foot above this pond is now sloping down towards it. So there won't be too much height. And in this, this area here, this old pond, which is a butyl liner is going to come out because it's got holes where the foxes go to drink. And one of the new ponds the fiberglass recycled ponds that I got on a famous auction site for about 60 quid and they're about 400 new is going to go in here and fit just nice so but there's going to be a whole migration of what's in there into a bit of swing space pond goes in and then that stuff goes back in but like I say as I'm doing it it's very slow around this area because I'm uncovering loads of stuff which if you're interested in wildlife is brilliant but it does mean you stop every five minutes to see what you've got but uh, that particular centipede I'm going to put on a, a website called iRecord in the UK which is a fantastic place if you ever fancy recording wildlife in your garden it's a great centralized place where you can not only record the wildlife preferably with a picture but if you're unsure of as what as to what it is they there are moderators on there and they will help and confirm or deny what you think it is but it's a great website and it's all like I say a collaboration of several different organizations and these data and statistics and all the uh, the recordings go towards a national database that helps us to know what's declining what's doing well and where improvements need to be made so it's a really good place to do that and it's called like i say i record little i record but uh i'll cut now to the stump coming out if my dad turns up with the chainsaw cheers so even though it's october it's about 22 degrees today which is ridiculous and the next few days is supposed to be quite mild so I've actually seeded this bank because 
over the winter with foxes walking on it because it's quite loose um, it's going to drop down otherwise so I'm taking the, I'm taking the opportunity to seed this and put a couple of steps in so this is the excuse my French it's taken the best part of four or five hours now just after all the digging out and the chopping of the main side roots there's about 15 roots all the way around this no wonder they're so strong pine trees um, and I guess they have to be because when you think they're evergreens so that means in the winter when there are storms they haven't lost their green foliage so they're more prone there's more surface area for the wind to blow on and they're more prone to get blown over so they need to be really strong in the root and they certainly are I've got one more and if you can see it I've been spending ages trying to figure out what the hell was stopping it from uh, from going over and there's just one little root I think left so I'm gonna take the chainsaw now hopefully it should fall over once that one's done but let's have a look There must be another one. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's try again. See if we can get this thing started. spent 20 hours in total digging around that the stump grinder would have been the perfect thing to use if I could ever have got one up this garden you can see the just how many tap roots and side roots there were on that bugger but she's out so that's phase two being the ground clearance and the stump done Phase one being the trees coming down, which I did in an earlier video. So phase three will be the pond going in, or the replacement pond for that one. And uh, maybe a pond up here too. After all this work, I'm being a bit lazy. I think I'm thinking in a lazy way, but I guess once I've got my energy back, I'll put another pond up here. Look at all the crap that came out of the ground. This is the kind of disrespect we're dealing with on earth. Most of the stuff I've, well, everything's been through a filter and there's plastics and asbestos and so much crap in this ground. I've only touched the surface. If you check out my other videos, you'll see how much rubbish the neighbor left up in the woods, which I tried to clean. And sadly, he's now passed away. So that project's um, not happening. Um, we lost him and his wife this year, very sadly. But uh, at least we got the woods cleared to some degree and a load of habitats put up there. But uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, because remember all this goes to the World Land Trust. Any money made on here. So it's a really good cause. 
probably not, not the most exciting video this one but those of you who, are, who appreciate how hard gardening is by hand with very little machinery in fact most of these were cut with that saw and not even the chainsaw most of you who do that will appreciate how hard it is so uh, thanks for watching cheers